You talk about seeking active, involved opportunities. Yeah. Well, see, the involvement or engagement or things that give you challenge really keep you young. I mean, if you want to kind of look back at the stress research or the, the research about peak performers, you got to have something that you're committed to, something that you're passionate and you care about. You know, you've got to mm -hmm. love something. Mm -hmm. Then you got to have something that has challenge, and that's where it stretches you. Then you have to have something where you have some measure of control, but that's really about choice. You know, when I say the involvement, it's like, can you make a difference, even if it's like in, in this area? Huh? And, the th and the last one is about the social support stuff, which is about with people. So it's important, you, you can work on a hot Line, you can be at home, you can you know, do all kinds of things, but, but something where you're engaged because that's what's going to keep you going. I like your idea about the community or mm -hmm. the connection because mm -hmm. as we get older, unfortunately, we lose people. Yeah, but and now so we got the internet. Now we yeah. have different ways to connect. We have yeah. different, but but it's a, it's a different kind of closeness or intimacy that's created that way. It's not like walking down to the corner store. Um, you also, and this is related, uh -huh. uh, nurture friendships and participate in the community itself. Yeah. Well, that thing you were just talking it's about. The same thing, yeah, right, you know. Steve, it's, it's like we do lose people, and so we have to re risk meeting new people and re risk kind of opening up to new people because they die, they go out of our lives, they move overseas, you know. Mm -hmm. and How dare they? I know, but, but, <laughs> but a lot of people, you know, you kind of get down and you make your list and it gets smaller. And I think one of the challenges of this second middle age is really to say, how can I open up and reconnect more and again? Now, I, I know this is a big topic, but um, you also had listed some of the questions people can ask yeah. themselves to reinvent themselves, and I only listed one. What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Mm -hmm. Can people reinvent themselves on purpose, sort of like I'm going to... Absolutely. You know, and so tell us about that. That's, well, such, that's such a liberating concept to be, you think you could, you could reinvent yourself. Well, I mean, it's a basis of psychology. I mean, are you who you are that you were born with? Or you and I have both worked with people who really decide to become different. And it takes risk to do that. It takes kind of a determination. But, you know, there are limitations, you know, and certain things about size and physical. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're not six foot tall, you know, are you going to be a basketball player? But, but <laughs> is there some other way that you can you know, push yourself or people usually don't want to do things because they're afraid of making mistakes. And so after the, the blessing of the second middle age is like, what have you got <laughs> to lose? What are they going to do to you? You know, you're, you're kind of, so I, I see people making great adventurous kind of leaps. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. So um, I'm going to change just a little topic here. I know that um, one of the things you're interested in is energy optimization mm -hmm. and revitalizing the workplace. Can you, I know these are all big topics, yeah, but yeah. share a little bit about that. Well, I think one of, one of the things that's getting really interesting is we're, we're kind of at a very interesting cross point where two trends are crossing. One is the demand for skilled labor is going up and the, oops, I've got them going, hang on. <laughs> I think I've got them going, they're, they're right for me. They're right for me, okay. The, the demand for labor, let's see, the demand for skilled labor is going up and the people to fill it are, is going down. Okay. Because so, and actually in 2005 is when those things cross. So we're going to have, this is good news, it's great news for people 35 to 49 because uh -huh. we're going to need, they're, they're going to have a much more broader kind of opportunity. There's going to be a lot of people over 55 who are, quote, surplus or available what's going to be the challenge is are the work is the workforce going to find ways to use what they know how to do so the reinvigoration has to do with what if you could i i mean we're being approached by organizations that say we've got these really smart people they're about to retire my gosh they they know things that we don't that we need that we need and we don't know how to get it out of their mind so if we could <laughs> if we could get two more years out of them if we could reinvigorate them and make them want to stay and want to mentor so the company, new people i'm going to change yeah. just a little bit companies are really saying that to you because they so many of my clients yeah. are saying i'm old who wants there's an age bias no. you're hearing the opposite no huh? i'm i i'm actually uh, working on two proposals right now for very large organizations that are trying to figure out one has 400 engineers that are moving, they're all boomers, and they're moving into this, you know, acute retirement phase, and mm -hmm. they're going, my God, we haven't, you know, captured the knowledge, we haven't made use of them as mentors, and they have wisdom. 
but but to keep those people, they don't want to work so hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so some of them, you know, have the idea of let's retire and get out of this. What if you could work three days a week? What if you could? What if you could have a flexibility? What if you could have a phased job retirement? Job share, maybe. Job share. I mean, job share is kind of one way that, w that we've approached. But I think organizations are going to have to get much more flexible about the number very quickly. And I know, Stan you know, I went to Stanford. Yeah. I know Stanford University yeah. has all these odd, yeah. kind of like forty percent, sixty-two percent. Why I mean, not? Why, you know, why not? But but see, corporations. It's only because they don't want to, you know, it, in some ways HR has said, you know, this is a full-time equivalent, 40, FTEs yeah. is how it is. And, you know, what if you're working 24-7? What if you're working in China, you know, with people in China, oh, you, yeah. have to, you have to, like, have a different pace. So I think organizations are, are, are starting to figure this out. And I think that really gives some hope to a lot of people who are feeling quote unquote old and not yeah. needed. So maybe there's even a desire to hire those kinds of people Absolutely. if they've been out of the workforce for a while, they still have something to give. Absolutely. And so one of the things is if they don't want to hire you, go someplace else. You know, and you may have to go to yeah. other, other kinds of places. Don't keep knocking on the door that won't open. Go someplace, you know, you may have to retake, you may have to kind of strip off all your ideas about what, what you did and get it down to the kind of the skill sets or the competencies. And you know, it's you too bad there isn't some list somewhere of um, friendly, you know, second Echo, career oh, generation oh, friendly oh, organizations. Adeco, where ADECO has been given worldwide awards for being a place that's a great, there is a great place as a, a award for the late career workforce, and ADECO has won that. ADECO. ADECO, okay. ADECO I, I have a list of them, but I can't remember them right now. Well, they can con we're going to give them their contact information <laughs> okay. so they can contact you. But I'm just saying that there, there, are, there is, I mean, using those kind of awards gives people an incentive, gives organizations an incentive. Everybody wants to be in the best place to work. So um, we have another graphic. I mm -hmm. thought we would uh, sure. talk about work trends. Yep. Um, and that um, there are a number of uh, things that are happening. Either they're happening now, or you foresee them happening in the future. The trends in the workplace. Well, you don't have to be kind of a rocket scientist. You can <laughs> kind of look at the demographics and sort of say, like, "Oh, it's going to." So um, and and you've already started to touch on them. So yeah. I think it fits together. The uh, and the audience can and see this while we're mm -hmm. discussing it. Uh, the workforce is going to be older, and there's going to be limited availability and lost knowledge. This is kind of yeah, what you were talking about. We kind of did before. this. It's that thing. But okay. We're also going to be the most educated and the healthiest generation that has ever been. So oh, really? Absolutely. Oh, that's good. It's very good. I'll go it's to the very gym good. Again. Yes. Okay. Good. No, no, no. It's very important. So, so go because ahead. of that, we're not going to go quietly into this retirement thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we are not going to stop. Uh, there. Well, I'm there. meeting more and more people that don't want to be bored either. They want to keep their minds sharp, you know? It, your body is connected to your mind. If you use both of them, you have a better go, chance. Everywhere I go, they're both there. Yes, they're both there. Yeah, the, uh, you talk about global connectivity and physically dispersed work. Yeah. So, well, so I was starting to talk about with China. It's like okay. we're, we're talking about outsourcing, but what could, what could people here, what could knowledge workers do in the U.S. that could be exported? You know, maybe maybe we run a virtual university in China with professors that don't want to work here, but they can work online. There's, there's you know, external degree programs. There's all kinds of ways to. Now we can export what we know how to do. We, we're we're working on a one eight hundred coaching service, which is so you call up. I mean, it's kind of like you do, except yeah. we, it's around certain assessments, and then people call in and they they get somebody to talk to them about the test they just took. Uh -huh. So all kinds of ways to export your knowledge or export or, or or ways to kind of reach reach out through this kind of virtual world that that was not available before. Is this before. a buffer at all uh, for outsourcing? I mean, in other words, is it uh, that, that you can market your skills in a slightly different way so it isn't like they take your whole job function and put it out because you... What's, har it yeah, what's hardest to outsource is knowledge. And, and, mm. com and people who understand complex things and can put stuff together. The, the, so the more you know about those kind of more knowledge worker kinds of things or, or to use your mind to create collaboration. What if you were, what were, you, if you were a virtual project manager? I mean, I work with somebody who is actually based in another city and he gets on the phone, we get on the phone with the team and he plays that role. Now wow. he could do that from anywhere. 